डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर केशन जोशी एंड टुडे आई एम हेयर फॉर द अनदर वीडियो लेक्चर ऑफ द सेम पेपर दैट वी हैव बीन डीलिंग विद so this is going to be the last and the fourth video lecture of the whole series that we talked about the uh, once again as i said uh, it is the fourth part of the video lecture of this particular unit the title of the unit is literary movements one what is literary movement and role of it in shaping the literature so this is going to be the last part of this paper friends today we are going to talk about certain literary movements as part of history of Engli uh, english literature so we are going to talk about irish movement modernism dadaism war poetry imagism imagism harlem renaissance in america surrealism post modernism beat poetry uh <coughs> magic realism post colonialism questions for discussion obviously as part of a video lecture every video lecture we do we do talk about uh, some of the questions that we can discuss after the video lecture and references for you uh, the students so we shall start with the first movement that we are going to talk about that is irish movement so as part of this movement this started somewhere in the late 19th century as it is mentioned here and uh, it was literary renaissance especially in drama so this we can see this irish movement we can see somewhere in drama in particular so the irish movement society was established as part of this movement irish literary society was established and the pioneers of the movement began to deal with irish materials settings and culture so as part of this movement the prominent aspects which were talked about were irish material irish setting and irish culture in fact uh, the part of the national movement for independence we can consider irish movement as part of the independent movement in the beginning of the 20th century there were certain minds who contributed to this movement they were w b yeats lady gregory and modgon so they started this irish dramatic movement because uh, when i said irish dramatist movement irish movement itself had a very strong influence over drama the revived irish drama which was highly uh <clears throat> poetic and imaginative so both words are very important as part of irish movement so they were highly poetic and imaginative it was also a revolt against some of the social plays which were written by especially uh, two main authors g b saw george bernard saw and galsworth so they were the people who wrote many plays but most of the plays probably all the plays were somewhere dealing with some social issues some social problems so they were against those uh, problem plays in in that way they also uh, revived some of the irish legends folklore and somewhere as part of their writing their creation irish life and characters were revived so that they did talk about irish life and characters and the pioneers of the movement used symbolic technique so as part of this movement the writers the contributors they often most of the time they were using symbolic techniques the irish literary society reconstructed the abbey theater a very famous one wherein yet singh and lady gregory they came together they had a meet there 
they discuss some of the related issues and finally they come up with something new and very lucid and interesting. It played great role in reviving Irish culture and literature. So Irish movement, it revolved around Ireland, Irish literature, Irish life, Irish culture, Irish character. So next movement that we are going to talk about is modernism. Modernism, postmodernism, we have been listening to these words. But when it comes to how this modernism came into existence and everything, we need to know that this literary movement emerged in England around 1910 as a reaction against Romanticism in the wake of the First World War. So, uh, two words are, uh, two events are very important. So, the first thing is, it is a reaction against modernism, uh, sorry, it is a reaction against Romanticism and there is a strong influence of First World War over this movement, particular movement that we are talking about that is modernism. Modernist literature is characterized by anti-romanticism, obviously as it was a reaction to this. It concerned with form, complexity and intellectual slant, wit, a use of wit, irony, paradox and conceit. So these were some of the features of modernism. It is also <clears throat> uh, it is also concerned with stream of consciousness in narration, focus on psychological investigations instead of focusing on plot and blend of high and low language. So most of the time it deals uh, it dealt with something new, unique of that time. Modernism is divided into two particular uh, uh, parts, pre-war and post-war. And as we know, when we talk about uh, world war, we must know that when it started and when it ended. So it started somewhere in 1914 and it ended in 1918. So this period is a very crucial kind of a, it was very crucial kind of a period in the history of humankind. And this came up with that kind of an idea, trauma and everything that people were feeling of, uh, of people living in that time with feeling these kind of things. Many movements simultaneously, they also came up with along with modernism. Some of the movements of this particular periods, uh, period were like war poetry, imagism, Dadaism, uh, Apocalyptic movement, end of the world and everything, surrealism, stream of consciousness and many more. And most of the time this age was considered to be the age of anxiety, interrogation and despair. And we know disparity is a sin in that way. And this movement, modernist, a modernism movement when we talk about this, this was a very gloomy kind of a state of mind of people who were involved in this just because of some of the problems in uh, problems going on around the world problems in humanity <clears throat> so there were certain writers as well who contributed to this movement the prominent one are here when we talk about thomas hardy thomas hardy was a poet of this early modernism wh whose poems were very dark and had a very pessimistic tone as we just discussed that humanity was not uh, on, on a balanced platform and obviously this was a very obvious kind of uh, mood that we can we could uh, we can imagine that what they must have felt at that time living in that particular era or age T.S. Eliot, a very famous literary person, is regarded as the father of modern poetry and his poem that is very uh, famous, the, the Wasteland, deeply touched the British and American people who themselves identified as people who are experiencing something 
called the sense of alienation, disparity, meaninglessness of life and everything. So, in that way, uh, when the audience was feeling such, obviously T.S. Eliot's this work based on modernistic approach, modern, uh, modern um, movement, modernism, was quite obvious that uh, it would appeal the audience of both British and America, Britain and America. <clears throat> Modernism continued till World War II and affected literature, art and thought of period profoundly. The next one, very interesting one, Dadaism, the name is very unique in that way. But the movement, is, uh, the movement itself is extremely unique. Dadaism was an art movement. There were certain movements which came into art first and then moved to literature. Obviously, literature is a part of art and art also complements literature at a certain level. So, this Dadaism was a, was a movement that came into art first and it came into existence during the First World War in Zurich. It was again a reaction to the horror of war. Dada poetry and the art of satirical and nonsensical in nature. So, the poetry which were written through this approach were satirical and nonsen uh, nonsensical, nonsensical in nature. Hans Arp wrote to this particular uh, moment he was involved in this. So, he what he how he described the trauma of the time was while guns rumbled in the, in the distance, we sang, painted, made collages and wrote poems with all our might. So, this statement itself says everything about the time the era that they were living in, the kind of trauma that they were suffering from and everything. So, the founder of the Dada, Dadaism was Hugh Ball, Hugh Ball, Hugh Ball, there are certain pronunciation of this. A writer who started magazine named Dada, the movement formed uh, the basics of surrealism. So, surrealism is once again a kind of a movement that came into art first and this magazine, this movement created a kind of a base for this movement, the another movement to start. The leading artists of the movement were Hans Saab, Marcel, uh, Duquemp, Francis Picabia and Kurt Sweaters. The names are quite unique in that way. Kurt Sweaters. When we talk about certain characteristics of this movement, they are, as we just talked about, they were satir. Uh, uh, sorry. <coughs> they were uh, sarcastic. Eight minute. Okay. <clears throat> when we talk about characteristics of Dadaism, as we said, they were sarcastic in nature and they were quite nonsensical, never follow any kind of known rules. Uh, they used to assemble things, <clears throat> they used to make collage and they used to uh, use some of the ready-made objects. So, when it comes to Dadaism, these were the characteristics of this movement. The movement was influenced by uh, abstractions and uh, impressionism and it influenced cubism, a very unique kind of movement in art and uh, to a lesser extent futurism. The another movement that we need to learn that we can discuss is war poetry. Now, the name itself suggests that this movement would have started somewhere because of the trauma of world wars. World War I, as I have said 
1914 to 18 was one of the most horrible events in the history of humankind in the 20th century. More than 41 million people lost their lives. This, uh, th this was the casualty that is recorded. Hundreds of poets wrote during this time, during the time of wars and they dealt with some of the tragic that they experienced in that particular era. There were some soldiers who wrote about the tragedy of war and patriotic spirit. So they were feeling from both the kinds of senses, experiences. They had some patriotic spirit in them. They had some tragedy of wars. They must have experienced some tragedy of wars as, at the same time. The early poets often endorse the cause of wars, the reasons and everything about the war, emphasize the notion of honor and patriotism in their writing. The late poets, the later one, the new generation, the new poets that came as part of this movement, they express the anti-war attitude depicting horror of war. So, uh, within the same movement, war poetry, we can see different kinds of writers. There were certain writers, poets, who were not in that way favor of wars, but they saw war as uh, from their po uh, patriotic spirit. And there were people who were against war at the same time. So, Rupert Brooke is a very famous uh, war poet and uh, <clears throat> he himself has written many war, uh, war poems and uh, he also died early in the war. Wilfred Owen and Isaac Rosenberg described the frantic and painful experience or nature of war and the injury in war that they must have uh, not might be personally experienced but from the experiences of people suffering they must have felt this and they have depicted injury in their writing in their poems so injury became the major theme of war poetry so here three names are very important Rupert Brooke uh, Wilfred Owen and Isaac Rosenberg War poets, they were also known as, they are also popular as trench poets. They question the idea of war itself, heroism and patriotism. The war poets of the late period, uh, war was, they, they felt that war was inhuman, war was brutal and the result of so-called patriotism. So, as I've said, within this movement, we had many minds watching war, observing war from different point of view. The another movement is Imagism. Uh, now, Imagism was a movement in early 20th century which came in Anglo-American poetry. It was born in England, this movement I'm talking about. It came into existence in England and America in reaction to once again Romanticism and Victorian poetry. It emphasized simplicity, clarity of expression and the precision through the use of images. As the name itself is Imagism, it had a very strong influence of uh, using images in their writing. Ezra Pound, once again a very well-known person, writer, is regarded as the founder of the Imagism. Ezra Pound adopted Hume's, a very famous critique, Hume's idea on poetry for his Imagist movement. Imagist is a, is a strand of modernism. When I say it's a strand of modernism, it's a very uh, different um, side of modernism, it's very opposite to modernism in that way, which aimed at replacing abstractions, which was very important in modernism, with concrete images. Where in modernism, something was very vague in expression, nothing was clear, as there was so much uh, 
uh, struck with uh, the kind of trauma of war, they thought of expressing their uh, ideas, their, their minds, their state of mind in different way. But at the same time, in Imagism, they were quite different from Modernism. Ezra Pound defined image as the uh, presentation of an intellectual and emotional complex in an uh, in an instant of time in an instant of time sorry <clears throat> Ezra Pound defined image as the uh, presentation of an intellectual and emotional complex in an instant of time now when we talk about characteristics of imagism they are uh, there is a list of this, we have got 10, direct treatment of the thing, that is one characteristic, musical quality, no rhythmic pattern, free verse, exactness, the precision, compression, freedom in choice of subject, suggest rather than the, uh, rather to offer complete sentence, they used to suggest rather than writing the whole sentence, expressing everything in a sentence, they would suggest something and to avoid cliche, something that has been, uh, people have been doing this. So, they wanted to do something new. Ezra Pound, Amy Lowell, Carl Sandberg, William Carlo Williams, Hilda Doolittle are some of the prominent poets of this moment. Uh, though the movement did not last long, it could not survive for a long period of time, Imagism deeply influenced modernist poetry in England, uh, in English literature. The another one, very important one, is Harlem Renaissance in uh, America. Here the word Harlem is very important that we will definitely talk about. In early part of uh, 20th century, American African American people would also call them Afro Americans, but they would prefer themselves. The, the, they would prefer us them to call African American in in Africa. Uh, <coughs> sorry. They would prefer us to call them African American, wherein they felt in America, living in America, they felt. Racism, violence, and legal segregation. So there were no uh, uh, we can say that there were very uh, less privileges that they were getting from the society that they were living in. They moved to northern states in large number as they were feeling imparity, they were feeling not balanced kind of behavior, they moved to northern states in a very huge number and settled in Harlem area, it is it's an area that they settled down in New York. There was an extremely, uh, uh, we can say that, that there was a surge of creativity and intellectual in Harlem. So, people came up with extremely creative and intellectual work as they were. It was a flowering of Negro Renaissance. It is also known as Negro movements most of the time or the Negro Renaissance. It is said to have begun in the late 1910 and ended in somewhere in 1930. The Harlem Renaissance was characterized by lyricism, formal uh, innovation and celebration of African American identity. So, when we talk about Harlem Renaissance, in this literature certain uh, <clears throat> people, they have projected themselves rather than talking about something alien. <clears throat> the major literary figures of this movement were Langston Hughes, Jean Thomas, Arna uh, Bontemps, County Cullen, and uh, Angelina 
Wild Grimke, Claude Mac Mackey, Neela Larson, James Weldon Johnson, uh, Zora Neil Hurston. So they are very unique kind of names, but uh, they were very prominent writers in that way as part of Harlem Renaissance. They contributed immensely. The Harlem Renaissance made impact in civil rights movement of the late 1940s and 1950s, wherein <clears throat> the kind of artistic revolution that we can see somewhere happened in Harlem. Harlem Renaissance was profoundly affected by primitivism and uh, as we all know Sigmund Freud's psychology, theory of Sigmund Freud, the ideas of Sigmund Freud and everything. So it affected African American music like blues and we do know that even the, uh, the dance form hip hop is also a gift of Harlem Renaissance. Jazz music is also a part of this movement. Surrealism. Surrealism is a cultural movement that began in 1920s. It is the best known for its visual artwork and writings. It flourished in Europe between World War I and II. So this is another movement that came into first art and then literature. Surrealism emphasized positive expression uh, uh, in reuniting consciousness, unconsciousness, realms and experience dreams and fantasy. Henry Britton published the Surrealist Manifesto in 1924 and this text is considered to be the very important text of this uh, movement. Now, when we talk about characteristics of surrealism, they were elements of surprise. We could see the elements of surprise in, in the writing. Unexpected juxtaposition. Juxtaposition is something that we have never even imagined. Distortion of reality. Reality is not presented as it is or as we see it, we perceive it. Dream like subject matters. Psychological rather than logical, uh, delving deep into the subconscious, bizarre and weird portrayal of reality. The major poets, painters and artists of this movement were Salvador Daly, Rini Magritte, Pablo Picasso, a very uh, known person, Andrew Britton and John Mero. So, these were the people who contributed to this movement. Surrealism was amply influenced by the writing of, as I have said, uh, Sigmund Freud and his concept of conscious, subconsciousness and unconsciousness. Surrealism was a revolution against the uh, constraints of the national mind and oppressive influence. It was a kind of a reaction to these kind of uh, mindsets or ideologies. Now, when I talk about postmodernism, postmodernism came into performance after the end of World War II. It is a form of literature which relies on fragmentation, paradox, unrealistic plots, unreliable narrators. We can see paradox, uh, sorry, parody. Uh, dark humor, magic realism and many other. The postmodern writers reject overwrite meaning and uh, claim that there is a possibility of multiple meanings in their work. So, they did not feel that there is the meaning in the text. They always used to feel that there is always a series of meanings. Whosoever would interpret the text, he or she would be having their own meaning. They also rejected the distinctions between different genres and forms of writing. Now, when I talk about characteristics of postmodernism, they were intersexuality, uh, me uh, <clears throat> metafiction, nonlinear narrative technique, magic realism, as I as we have discussed it in, in previous lectures, the mixing of actual historical events with fictional events. <clears throat> 
reader involvement and many other things. Postmodern literature serves as a reaction to the supposed stylist, style, uh, stylistic and ideological limitations of modernist literature. There were certain writers as part of this movement who are very prominent in that way. Thomas uh, Penchon or Penchon, Don Deli, uh, Delilo, very uh, different names, Kurt Van Gert, Kurt Van Gert, George Louis Borges, a very famous person, Samuel Beckett, Vladimir Nabo, Nabokov, Nabako, David Foster Wallace and many other. Beat poetry, on a very quick note, if we can, if we can understand this, is it was a uh, movement that evolved during 1940s in the New York City and San, uh, San Francisco city somewhere and became the heart of the movement in 1950, 1950s. The end of World War II, poets like uh, Ellen Ginsberg, Gary Sender, Lawrence Falling Gritty, the Gro and Gregory uh, Carso, they questioned the mainstream politics and culture. So they were quite uh, uh, revolutionary in, in, their, in their approach. The main features of the movements were battle against social conformity, rejection of literary traditions, the use of drugs to achieve higher uh, consciousness, meditation, interest in Buddhism and many other. Now when we uh, talk about this movement, it did not last for a long time span as people criticized this movement for many uh, reasons and there were certain reasons like sexual uh, deviancy, illicit drug use and anti-intellectual stance. The hippie movement of 1960s is uh, once again a very important movement that came into existence because of this beat generation. Magic realism, magic realism, magic realism is a genre of narrative fiction and more broadly literature, painting, film and theatre. So we can see the effect of magic realism in all these areas. And uh, uh, it is something very unique in, in a way that writers of this movement, they blended something magical and reality in a way that we fail uh, in a very first sight. We fail to understand whether whatever is shown to us is magical or reality. It, it makes us believe in what they say. Uh, we have got some, uh, several writers of, uh, as part of this movement. Emily Bronte, we can see that in Wuthering Heights, there is certain element, uh, uh, there are uh, certain elements of magic realism. And Kafka is the metamorphosis, we can see this. And uh, this movement began in Latin America and there are certain writers who contributed to this movement immensely. The very famous one, a um, uh, very uh, major contributor to this movement is Gabriel Garcia Marquez here and there are many other. <clears throat> Today we can see magic realism as an intellectual movement, an intellectual trend and uh, when we talk about certain characteristics of this movement, there were situations and uh, I, I, uh, 
there were situations uh, and incidents defy logic it is very hard to apply logic in in this kind of writing the use of myths and legends historic context societal concerns distorted time and sequence real world setting matter of fact tone blending the naturalistic techniques with the surreal and supernatural unreal elements play part uh, in in realistic environment when we did talk about what is magic realism these all things became directly or indirectly part of this genre itself this movement itself the ordinary as a uh, miraculous and the miraculous as ordinary so they would present something miraculous in a very ordinary way and they would present something ordinary in a very miraculous way in that way this movement brings up something very unique and as we know gabriel garcia marquez is a very famous person and his 100 years of solitude written in 1964 is considered to be the very important text as part of this movement post colonialism post colonialism or the post colonial studies is the academic study of cultural legacy of colonialism and imperialism now when i say colony it's a very uh, different kind of a term in a way it reminds people of slavery and something that came up after that time became part of post modernism <clears throat> it is the historical period that represents the aftermath as i've said of western colonialism and imperialism over the world in many countries in india itself we know that we were the colony of britishers <clears throat> the term postmodernism is sometimes used to refer to the struggles of indigenous people as we indians in many part of the world in the early part of 20th century 21st century fenen in his book the wretched of the earth discuss material and psychological consequences of colonialism so after colonialism when people were left without any kind of a support and everything how people would struggle in their life how people would be feeling in that particular time uh, time span is somewhere is studied as part of this uh, <clears throat> movement when i talk about characteristics of this movement the use of native language by the writers rewriting history uh, valorizing of cultural identity Nation, uh, nationhood and nationalism meta narrative colonial discourse decolonization and the struggle that is involved in that and challenging stereotypes so these all kind of things become part of this movement there were prominent themes of post uh, colonial writing and they are reasserting the identity of indigenous culture revisiting and re uh, and revising colonial history depiction of people in the uh, and the lives centered by colonialism intro <coughs> interrogating colonial part cultural alienation alienation because when there is a colony when you're living in a colony by a colonizers you're always moved away from your culture identity you become you feel like alienated person from your own culture from your own identity recreation of mimic men uh, negritude feminism dalitism queer theory and everything hybridity and diaspora these all kind of literature genre it themselves become part of post colonial movement there are certain writers as part of this and theorist critics of post colonialism they are homi baba edward said uh, franz fanon gayatri spibak mahasweta devi 
Chino wa Achibi, Salman Rushdie, a very a very famous figure. All, uh, in fact, everyone is very famous in the in the writing in the contribution. Uh, Zine, Ways, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Derek Walcott, Dipesh Chakraborty, Ben Okri, and the list would go on and on. Very important uh, texts that we have as part of the contribution that we can see as part of this movement are things fall apart, why sagas or see the god of small things, midnight children as we know by Sarman Rusty, <coughs> heart of darkness are the popular post-colonial works. They try to free themselves. It's a very obvious kind of a response that they try to feel free and they try to express themselves free from the colonial hangover and examine their native that they belong to, they were rooted in and indigenous culture and tradition in their own way, in a way, in, in a very unbiased way. Because most of the time people living in colony were projected in a very biased way by the colonizers. So friends, those were the movements that we just talked about. So here are certain questions for discussion that you can have. <clears throat> Discuss some of the major characteristics of the uh, characteristics of the movements that we discussed as part of this presentation. Trace out differences between modernism and postmodernism. What is the difference between both these movements? How they are different from each other? What do you understand by the term magic realism and how do you see this as a movement? So how this magic realism as a movement comes to you or what do you understand by this movement? Discuss some of the movements started in art first and then moved to literature later. So these are the important questions that you can uh, discuss and these are the references. So thank you friends. Yeah, yeah, but